everybody, Rock Reynolds here with the last of the four fiddle lessons. Even brung myself a cheat sheet. The difference between a fiddle and a violin if you take a violin somewhere, you have to say, I brought my violin. If you take your fiddle somewhere, you have to say, I brang my fiddle. Or you can use the blue perfect subjunctive, I brung the fiddle. I'm going to talk about the philosophy behind the fiddle. Anyone can learn to play the fiddle. Just about anyone. If you're not physically handicapped and if you have the capacity to enjoy music, you could learn to play the fiddle. There's three reasons why most people don't enjoy the fiddle, don't play the fiddle. Number one is people don't know how good fiddle music can sound. Obviously, I'm not the upper limit. If you want to know the upper limit for fiddle music, here's a couple recommendations. Here's a CD, Mark O'Connor Championship Years. If you want to hear how good fiddle music can play, old-timey, contest-type contest, contest type tunes. If you want to hear how good bluegrass can sound with a fiddle, get Kenny Baker Plays Bill Monroe. These are the upper limits of how good fiddle music can sound. And these are my goals. I still got a couple decades to go. These lessons you'll notice, one of the goals here is to use as little physical energy as possible. There is a lot of energy that goes into fiddle, fiddle, fiddle music, but the energy is mental and spiritual, not physical. When I started taking lessons, decades ago. I grabbed the bow as hard as I could. I grabbed the fiddle as hard as I could. And I squoze down as hard as I could. Ten seconds into a song, my arm was hurting. Everybody, every body part was hurting. I was sweating. I was tired. And my instructor, the first day he saw me, whoa, you're doing everything wrong. I didn't appreciate that comment because that was my style, man. I wanted my style to be, I wanted to get into that music. And what I eventually came to learn is that it was my style that was preventing me from getting any better. Now if you think the tunes I just posted suck, you should have heard me 30 years ago. They sucked a thousand times worse. So as bad as this music is, it's still a lot better than it used to be. And one day, it's going to be good. So the light touch. That's what we're going for here with the fiddle, the light touch. If you haven't, your fiddle should be set up so that the strings are very close to the neck. You want to be able to get a note with as light as touch as, as possible. If you have a great big bridge and you have to squeeze down real hard to get that string to touch that neck, go to some shop, have them lower the bridge and lower the action on that. I play about an hour a day. I have no calluses on the end of my fingers. When I started taking lessons, I had calluses on my fingers playing about an hour a day. I used to squeeze down real hard. You should be able to play the fiddle all day and not get tired. Spouses may not appreciate that, but sometimes, sometimes that's a lot of fun. The value of instruction. I want to talk about that. I've run into a number of musicians who call themselves self-taught and I don't believe that there's anybody who's really self-taught everybody learns something from somebody at some time maybe they didn't pay for lessons but for me having a having a good instructor made all the difference in the world my 17 years of fiddle lessons is the best money I ever spent in my life fiddle lessons should be fun now here's a warning about it here's a warning about some instructors I know a woman who took fiddle lessons, and for three months all she did was work on scales. That sucks. If you're going to take fiddle lessons, you should always be working on a tune. Working on scales has its place. If you play a tune in D, it would be quite proper to practice the scale in D, but then work on the tune. When you take fiddle lessons, you should always be working towards a goal trying to make a, a tune sound better. That's what makes it fun. The, uh, I've done a lot of practicing in my day, and it's all been fun. 
I may not be that good, but I have had a great time doing this. Here's a nice little contraption that you may want to consider. It's called a practice mute. If you have spouses or parents or siblings that have less appreciation of your playing than you, this may come in handy. A practice mute allows you to play all night long. Here's the sound without the mute. Put this, put this practice mute on. Doesn't change the dynamics of the playing at all. I can practice all night long and not disturb the person in the next room. Practice mutes are a way cool thing. In these fiddle lessons, I've talked a lot about the mechanics and the notes. I want to emphasize that the ultimate goal goes beyond that. The music is not the notes. The music is the rhythm. And it took me about 10 years to realize that. 10 years of my 17 years of lessons, it took me to realize that. The notes are kind of the icing on the cake. And once you get your rhythm down, the notes just kind of flow. Now, I've talked about the mechanics, and how can you listen to your music when you're worried about where to put your fingers or where to hold your arm? The ultimate goal is to do enough practicing where you get the feel of the fiddle. The fiddle should be a feeling, so when the notes come up, you just feel how they're supposed to play, and they come out. That way you don't have to wor worry about the mechanics. Get the mechanics down first, though, by slowing them down, and using the squawk notes, get those mechanics down, but ultimately you should practice enough where you don't have to think about those mechanics anymore. How much practice does it take? And how, how much is it worth to practice that? And I want to finish this philosophy lesson off with something called opportunity costs. Now what do you do with your time all day? Play video games? Watch TV? What if you watch 10 hours of TV per week? What if you devoted all of that to fiddle practice? Now, the bad side, from your standpoint, you'd miss all your favorite TV shows. But imagine 10 hours of practice. Those squawk notes lessons, the keys to the universe I talked about in that last lesson, they take a lot of practice to get that feeling. But imagine how much fun you could have being able to control that fiddle. And I'm going to get there someday. Like I said, give me a couple more decades. But your opportunity costs. How much is it worth? Is it worth watching 10 hours of TV per week versus practicing the fiddle? I don't hardly watch any TV at all. It's, to me, there's no, there's no question. This is just so much more fun than watching TV. And I have goals playing this stuff. So, it's been a pleasure providing some fiddle lessons. I hope I've provided some motivation for beginning fiddle lessons for beginning and intermediate fiddle players. In my opinion, fiddle is losing its popularity, and it shouldn't. If played properly, it is a very good sounding instrument, and it can provide a lot of fun. I'm Rock Reynolds, August 23rd, 2010. Parma Heights, Ohio. Thanks for your time. Wrap with you later.